and now you're like around 55,000, dude. Going into this year, I started with 2,900 subscribers, right? I was on YouTube 18 months. People see that I grew 50,000 subscribers in six months and think that's crazy. And it's like, well, I don't know. I was grinding. There was plenty of days where I was getting like 22 views a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, dude, I just added that to my Amazon card. You have to read it. Oh, okay. it's incredible. Hey, everybody, welcome back to a brand new video. Michael Lewis Hudson here. So I'm super excited uh, to be uh, joining or interviewing uh, Ryan Johnson. Uh, I've been uh, following him for quite some time. Uh, we're a part of a, actually we're a part of a YouTube group together. He uh, runs a YouTube channel, currently has 55,000 subscribers, super impressive. And he also is the king of the French fried ground beef burgers that I <laughs> saw on your channel, dude. Looks delish. I'm, and those things are so good. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually going to uh, cook that tonight. But hey, thanks for joining me, man. How are you doing? No, nah, man, I'm doing great. I'm uh, very excited to be jumping on with you. And um, I'll say you, you've been following my stuff, but I've been watching your stuff equally as long. I've always been impressed at the quality of your videos and I'm excited to be talking to you as well. I really appreciate it, man. So yeah, I just, there, there's a few things I wanted to tackle today, you know, just about, you know, what you're about, kind of like your backstory. Uh, another thing is just, you know, your YouTube success that you've had so far, cause you've grown exponentially in a short amount of time compared to other uh, YouTubers. And then uh, lastly, just like your future, like what you see your goals are and, and things of that nature. So Kind of tell me about, you know, I know your YouTube channel is kind of surrounded about uh, around intermittent fasting. Um, if anybody's seeing Ryan for the first time. Um, so can you kind of just tell us a little bit about your journey, how you got into intermittent fasting and just um, how it brought to, to you now? With the fasting and kind of the weight loss thing, what that looks like for me is I have always struggled with my weight growing up. Um, now I spent a decent amount of time in the army and fortunately for me, the army kind of kept me in check. Uh, <laughs> you can't always get too big, but I was always like up and down and got out of the army, uh, losing my time now, got out of the army six years ago, oh, nice. uh, put on a decent amount of weight, COVID hit. I have lost weight plenty of times in the past, but I always put it back on and I was like, you know what? I need to change my mindset because my mindset when it came to losing weight was always, all right, how do I lose the weight? And then I stopped thinking about it. So I went into it with a mindset of, all right, I need to find something sustainable, lose the weight slowly so that I can keep it off forever. Learned about intermittent fasting. Um, and that's kind of why I committed to intermittent fasting and finding this approach that I could live sustainably and live healthy, not just trying to do like a 90 day transformation, but that's kind of how I got into fasting was I was tired of the yo-yoing of my weight. So I wanted to figure out some way that I could keep it off. I'm a huge proponent of intermittent fast. I've been doing it for, you know, two to three years now and amazing benefits. And like what you said, it's just super sustainable. It's something that, you know, it's not one of those fad things. Like, you know, you see like the keto diets out there. That's just really, really hard to to keep doing it for years to come. For those who don't really know what intermittent fasting is, can you kind of just like give us the, <laughs> so, the so, layman's terms of it? No, absolutely. And I'll keep it in the layman's terms. I'll keep it as simple as possible because that's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm about is like mm -hmm. sharing it for the everyman. I love the science that goes into it, but in its simplest form, just to put a time on it, you stop eating at 8 p.m. and you don't start eating until noon. It's skipping breakfast in its simplest term. And for those that are interested in ever doing it to lose weight, one of the biggest reasons that you lose weight doing it is it does help with your calorie restriction because by cutting out one meal, as long as you keep your lunch and dinner the same that you normally would, you're cutting out those five to 800 calories of breakfast, which helps you lose weight. Now, there's a lot of other benefits and things like that, but simplest term, stop eating at 8 p.m. and just don't start eating again until noon. Gotcha. So, you know, a lot of people can be, like daunted by that. They're like, Oh dude, you're skipping breakfast. Because I mean, let's be honest, like our culture in the United States, it's like, Oh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Right. Was when you first started that journey, was it hard for you to, to like get that out of your brain or was it easier for, for you to adjust? It wasn't too hard for me to adjust because the thing that I thought about was, okay, I'm missing breakfast, but I'm getting to eat regular foods, lunch and dinner. Now there was physically, it is tough in the first few weeks. Huh? When everyone's starting, I'm like, Hey, listen, 
you do got to kind of muscle through those first two weeks because when you normally eat breakfast at 8 a.m. every morning, the first morning you skip breakfast, 8.30 rolls around, your stomach's grumbling because <laughs> you're normally eating breakfast. Yeah. But after about three weeks, that kind of subsides. And now, what is it? It's 11 o'clock right now. I stopped eating at 8 o'clock last night. I don't plan on eating until 4 today. I'm just doing a little longer, but I'm not even thinking about food just because your body gets used to it. I, like I always that. try to – my wife calls me the eternal optimist, so <laughs> I don't think about I am missing breakfast. I'm thinking about lunch and dinner. I get to eat regular foods and stay healthy. I think I've kind of had a similar path. It was one of those things where it was, just, it was like – it was a little hard at first because I'm used to at least having like some eggs or a protein shake or something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, drinking coffee and, you know, keeping up with, with water and stuff like that, you know, there you go. Blood's appetite. So it's definitely pretty cool, man. Can, can you kind of go into some of the benefits of, of doing intermittent fasting? What, what are some of the main things, uh, that it does to help? It does. Once you make it through those first few weeks of hunger pangs, things like that, you do, um, have increased energy and focus. I enjoy going to work. Now, today I'm working a closing shift. I only do that one to two days a week. Most days I'm working like eight to five or nine to six. And most of the time I fast through work because I actually have more focus and I'm able to be more productive um, when I haven't eaten. So that is one of the benefits. You do feel increased energy and focus during your fast. It sounds counterintuitive, but you have the energy. Mm -hmm. For most people, it's in our stored body fat. That is what's fueling us to get through the day and your body produces ketones when you're fasting. Yeah, I, I I can totally concur with that. I mean, that was like one of the first things, like people talking about like that brain fog or whatever, like that was totally eliminated probably by like week three or four of, of doing the fasting. And it was just like workouts were just getting way better. What are like some tips you would give someone who's totally brand new to fasting that, that wants to get into it? What would be like the number one thing you would suggest to them? So the very first video that I posted on my YouTube channel it is part of the reason that I've had some of the success that I have. I shared it in, in some Facebook groups, some intermittent fasting groups that I'm on. I was fasting for about six to seven months and I tried to codify what I was doing and why I think it was working for me. And the tip that I'll give to people is only do one thing at a time. There is extreme power with the power of focus and if you don't, if you aren't looking to lose weight fast, if you're looking to lose weight forever and get healthy forever, by taking that long-term approach, the first thing you need to focus on and the only thing to focus on is the fasting itself. So that means stop eating at 8 p.m., don't start eating again until noon, and just do that for a month or two before you do anything else. And what do I mean by anything else? Before you start a new fitness routine, before you start trying to clean up your diet, before you start trying to get in 10 glasses of water a day, before you try to walk 10,000 steps. So often we have this desire to go through a quick transformation. We try to do six things at a time. And when you try to do that, when you try to do everything, you end up doing nothing. So my recommendation is just start simple. Awesome. Great advice. It's a perfect segue into uh, your YouTube channel. And, you know, I got to acknowledge you for a second. Like I remember when we first uh cross paths i, I want to say you're probably at like i want to say you're probably at like a few thousand subscribers like when we first like started messaging each other and you know watching each other's videos and now you're like around fifty five thousand, dude as of yesterday when i checked and watched your new video that came out yesterday man that that is just that's so awesome just to see your growth and and uh you know what i loved about you is that um you were just extremely consistent like there wasn't a week where you didn't, he disappeared, you know, you were just constantly posting in the group, constantly um, trying new things. And there's, there's one thing that you said yesterday in the video I wrote down that you always say is uh, progress over perfection, which I totally love. Um, because I mean, let's be honest, there's a lot of humans that want to be perfectionists, right? Like in everything that we yep. do, but, um, like we're, we're taught, you know, as long as we get better 1% every single day, that that's all that matters. So I really love that you said that. Um, so with, with YouTube, I just want to learn like, you know, why you got into it, what you love about it and kind of your journey in, in that realm. Yeah, no. So, um, as far as the YouTube goes, I, it started for me as I do enjoy journaling and tracking my progress. That is something that has kind of been consistent um, throughout my life. 
And the form of that journaling has changed. Like when I was in the army and working out, there was periods where I got in really good shape and I had a lifting log. I tracked every weight, every rep. Journaling is something that I've always enjoyed. So when I started intermittent fasting, like my second week, I was taking a progress photo to keep myself accountable to journal. And I was doing that on Instagram. I had a friend that I served in the army with. His name is Jude Co. He runs the YouTube channel Jump Rope Veteran. And he was on YouTube sharing his experience with jump roping. And him and I got to talking. And it turns out, after looking at the two platforms, YouTube looked like a better way for me to journal and document my journey versus Instagram, because Instagram is ethereal, like things are here today, gone tomorrow. Whereas YouTube, it has always been my vision that when I get in great shape, because I always have in the back of my mind, I'm going to get in amazing shape. (laughs) I want somebody to be able to go back to YouTube and kind of watch the journey and the evolution of a real transformation versus, you know, a 90 day thing. So that's how I got into YouTube was he was on it. So, and then shortly after that, um, I joined through my investigation on YouTube is where I got turned on to think media and um, kind of you and I met was through, I'm a busy man. I work full time. I've got two girls, a wife, and I wanted to cut my learning curve and learn about the platform. So like, can you kind of walk us through from the moment you uh, gather ideas? Like what's your process of gathering, like what you want to shoot from, from that point to when you post? Um, yeah. So uh, um, I am, I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. <laughs> I, I, um, I enjoy that aspect of YouTube as well. And because I, I just love entrepreneurship and the idea of starting and growing something and just having something that's around. That's something I've always been drawn to, which is part of the reason on YouTube, what does that have to do with my idea creation? Because I watch a lot of entrepreneur stuff. Gary V is always coming across. (laughs) Gary V is always coming across my feet. And one of the things that he talks about um, is the importance of failing faster. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I like to do is when it comes to idea creation, one success leaves clues. So I like to see formats that are out there. I don't necessarily want to reinvent the wheel. Um, So I I find formats that work and then I try to put my own spin on it. A format that works is what I eat in a day. That's one of the things that I'm kind of known for on YouTube is everything I eat in a day. My spin on it is how I incorporate that into intermittent fasting and kind of living an everyday life. And so I get the idea. I see what works. I put my spin on it and I put a lot of things out there. And when I find something that works like these, what I eat in a day videos, That's 70% of my content strategy. And then the other 30% I'll experiment with to see if something hits. Going back to Gary Vee failing faster, I don't mind taking a risk to see if something works because I try to keep my process compact. I film everything on my phone. I film and edit on my phone. I now have an editor, but prior to two months ago, up to like 30,000 subscribers, I edited everything on my phone just so that I could be quick because the thought of putting it on my computer was very daunting to me. I don't have the extra time to upload the files to my computer, sit down in iMovie for an hour to edit. So I try to be quick so that I can see if it works or not. Now it may not be the best, but done is better than perfect. Yeah. So you, so you, what do you, you have an iPhone? iPhone. Is it the the newest one or uh, which? So it is the 13. I had an 11 and then I cracked the screen like three months ago. I cracked the screen and got it replaced. And when they replaced it, they didn't tell me that with the screen replacement, it was no longer waterproof. Oh, wow. And I got it wet. That's like one of the features of the iPhone. Anyway, so I got the iPhone 13, the regular. Um, Maybe at some point I'll upgrade to the Pro Max. No, I know, but no, that's just impressive because I mean, yeah, watching your, your YouTube videos, I mean, you wouldn't think that it's, it's filmed on the iPhone. Um, I mean, there's some parts when, you know, you're selfie or, or you're doing selfie yeah. mode or whatever, but even the way you edit too, it's really impressive, man. It's, it's crazy. They can edit all that on your phone. What are other strategies that you utilize for YouTube? Because I mean, like I said earlier, um, you were able to grow like pretty quick. I mean, what is it as far as, is it making the right content? Is it joining various groups? I mean, what was kind of your strategy in growing your audience? So I would say there's two things that have contributed to my success. A lot of my success is coming from shorts. Okay. Um, so I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to continue to get a little better on long form content. And I am. 
Mm-hmm. But like you said, progress over perfection. And you brought that up. I wanted to share. I got this on the bookcase, like read Atomic Habits. Oh, dude, I just added that to my Amazon card. You have before. to read it. Oh, okay. It's incredible. Small changes compounding over time. So I'm trying to get better on my long form content. But when it comes to my short form content, going back to Gary V, when I was first started posting, I am sure to reply to every comment. I'm now at the point that I can't reply to every comment just because I have too many coming in. Mm -hmm. But I understand that on the every on the other side of every one of those numbers, 55,000 subscribers, I recognize that every one of those numbers is a person. It's not just a random number. Mm -hmm. So I, I interact with the community. But then the other thing that I have learned with shorts and I'm learning this now. I didn't, I wouldn't say that I knew this at the beginning, but if I had to codify what I'm doing with my shorts, it's this. The reason people come to shorts is to be entertained. They don't come to shorts to learn life hacks. They don't come to shorts for any of that reason, but to be entertained. So understanding that, what is the best way for me to reach the largest number of audience and entertain them is to tell story. So every one of my shorts is a standalone story but part of the reason my audience is growing i think at a pretty at a healthy rate is because when you watch all of my shorts together it tells an even longer story the short story is here's what i ate today that's the story i you know i went to work at this time i got off on break i had a french fried onion burger that's the story for the day but the long story is here's a guy who's working a full-time job that has a family that's trying to get healthy. When you watch them all, you see the long story. And that's why people subscribe. And that's why they continue to watch is because they want to see the individual story, but they also want to see what's the long story. Wow. I don't know. It's just no, something no, I've been thinking about. No, that, that, that makes sense because I feel like sometimes, especially with shorts, people just post random stuff. Like there's no connection and it's very yeah it's very interesting that you know you see the big picture and then you kind of just share little splices of that we know that youtube is starting to explode i mean this this past several years more and more people are starting to jump on the boat and create content um you know for those people who are brand new brand spanking new uh to the space would be the number one thing you would advise them to do So I actually had a friend, I've had a few friends reach out and say, hey, I see what you're doing. I want to start doing something. I do like the idea of shorts just because it it does allow you to reach a large audience. But the thing that I'll say is figure out when it comes to the shorts and it comes to your channel, figure out what story you want to tell Mm -hmm. and then start just posting content. The posting content, like I said earlier, fail faster. It is true that you have to produce those hundred something videos, especially on shorts. It may even be more. I think I'm at like 500 videos right now total, maybe less. I don't know. It's a lot. I do like one a day now. Um, But start posting because gathering all the information Mm -hmm. before you start is just eating into your time. You'll learn as you execute. So just start posting videos, learn to find your voice. Don't worry about, you know, having the perfect video right now and focus on 1% better, a little bit better over time. Compound interest plays a big thing. You know, I think we, you and I have both heard it before, Uh, you know, overnight successes don't happen overnight. A lot of people see what I'm doing and think, man, this is crazy X, Y, and Z. But Mm -hmm. going into this year, I started with 2,900 subscribers right? I was on YouTube 18 months Mm -hmm. and grew 3000 subscribers, which is a lot, Mm -hmm. but people see that I grew 50,000 subscribers in six months and think that's crazy. And it's like, well, I don't know. I was grinding. There was plenty of days where I was getting like 22 views a day. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I know that all too well, (laughs) but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's crazy, man. And speaking of grinding, I mean, I mean, we're the, you know, for the experienced YouTubers, was, you know, I mean, there's going to be days where you're just like, man, I do not want to post a video and I just want to relax. And there's days that you just want to give up. I mean, did you ever have days like that? And if so, what did you do to, to fight that? That is part of the reason why I got into the shorts thing was so I'm working a job now. I have been here for just about a year. But when I transitioned into this job, there was a period of time where um, I had put on a little bit of weight 
And then, you know, I talk about intermittent fasting and uh, that imposter syndrome came in and I like had put on 15, 20 pounds through the stress of changing jobs and everything. I was like, how can I be talking to people about losing weight when I've regained some of my weight? Now, what I didn't put into perspective was I lost 60, I put on 20. It's like I hadn't gained it all back, but that imposter syndrome took over. And there was a period of a few months where I wasn't posting videos near as often. I was maybe doing once every three weeks. And some of those videos I have now even unlisted because they were just completely off brand. I did try to post like every once every three weeks, but then when I got back into it, that's part of the reason I started posting shorts was at this point, I was 18 months in, I had taken a little bit of a pause from posting regularly. Mm -hmm. And that was just me flexing my creative muscle. And I would also say that at 18 months, I hadn't seen the growth that I wanted to. So not only was shorts a way for me to flex my creative muscle, but it was also for me a way to do something different, see if it worked. And fortunately it did. That's really inspiring, man. And, you know, uh, you know, just watching your videos and your work ethic really just pushes me to, to, to keep pumping videos as well. So, uh, really do appreciate you, uh, sharing your knowledge with, with all of us. Um, no, so do you have any, as far as your future, what, what, do you, what are some of your future goals, you know, with life, YouTube business? So what, what are some of your goals? Yeah. So I think one of my goals right now um, is to continue what I am seeing that there is power in and is this community that I'm starting to grow about the idea of slow and steady weight loss and getting healthy forever. So my plan right now is to just continue to grow my community as big as possible. Um, and to that end, I think one of the things that I'm doing is I'm trying to take a long-term approach to my channel. And one of the things that that means is I'm turning down a decent amount of sponsorship opportunities because the channel is growing like it is. I probably get two, three emails a week saying, Hey, would you like to, we'd love to sponsor a video X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And most of them are products I've never heard of. So I'm not saying that I'm, I'm definitely going to do sponsored deals at, at some point I will. Um, but I want it to be adding value to the community, not just, Hey, you know, check out this thing, use code IF with Ryan for 10% off. <laughs> so what, does that, what does that mean for me? It means I think even in the last two months, I have kind of made the decision that I would love to go full-time on YouTube, but I still, even now, don't think it's going to happen at the speed that I was anticipating. So I'm going to continue to invest any money that I make to just continuing to grow the channel so that maybe some point in the future, I can start drawing an income off of it. Same thing. Like a, I'm trying to treat it like a small business in that respect, right? Nobody starts a small business and expects to be drawing an income. You got to reinvest it into the business. So my channel, right. Or my plan right now is to just continue to grow the channel and reinvest in better videos and grow in the community. Awesome, man. That, that, that's, that's great. That's great, dude. I, and, you know, to be honest, I, I no doubt in my mind that you're, you're going to get there. I bet, I bet you'll get there quicker than you think. Yeah. We, we always uh, overestimate what we can do in one year and underestimate what we can do in five. And I think that's kind of where I'm at. You know, I thought a year from now I would already be full time. So I'm kind of re resetting myself thinking, you know, where am I going to be in five years? I'll probably end up surpassing that, but I'm trying to tamp my expectations a little bit. Awesome. Awesome, dude. Well, Hey, uh, I want to respect your time, but I just want to thank you so much for jumping on today. Really do appreciate it. I hope we can keep in touch and uh, how can people find you? Well, how, what's the, uh, if people want to subscribe to your channel and yeah, no. So the channel is intermittent fasting with Ryan. Um, that's where a majority, of, I have limited time, energy and effort. So that's where a majority of it goes into is YouTube. I do have an Instagram as well. It's at IF with Ryan. Um, so I am trying to be a little more active on Instagram, but really YouTube is the focus. Uh, if you go to the channel, like my email address is there as well. It's IF with Ryan at gmail.com. But uh, check out the YouTube channel, Intermittent Fasting with Ryan. Awesome. Hey, Ryan, really appreciate it, man. And best of luck to you. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching. And we will uh, see you in the next video. Keep crushing it. All right. Thanks.